Hi everyone, welcome to the lecture on lessons five and six. In this lecture, we are going to cover the urinary system and the reproductive systems, both male and female. So let's get started here. So what structures are we talking about when we talk about the rest, the uh, urinary system, excuse me, I'm still on respiratory. Uh, so the urinary system, some structures that we need to be aware of, first and foremost, is the kidneys. They sit low, kind of in the back and to the sides, and uh, they're kind of fist-sized, bean-shaped organs, and their job is to filter the blood and uh, also to create the waste product we refer to as urine, right? So they regulate a lot of the uh, balance of electrolytes like salt and potassium and magnesium in our body as well as other vitamins and minerals. Now the renal pelvis, and I have a picture coming up, so um, Stay tuned for that. The renal pelvis is a part of the kidney that we'll definitely dig into more when we are in our anatomy and physiology class, but it is a funnel-shaped reservoir and it is in each kidney. And as the little filtration units in the kidneys called the nephrons filter out the waste, the renal pelvis is has these little collecting ducts and they all kind of um, culminate, if you will, at the renal pelvis. And then the urine drains into a structure called the ureter. So each kidney has a renal pelvis and a ureter. And the ureter is a long, skinny, S-like tube that terminates at the bladder. And so urine will leave the kidney through the ureters and collect in the bladder until it is time for urination, all right? So at that time, the urine is released from the bladder and it flows through a narrow tube called the urethra and that is where it meets the outside world. Now the urinary meatus is the opening through which the urine passes to get to the outside of the body. The urinary tract is a term that we use to refer to the organs and the ducts that are responsible for the elimination of urine. And again, urine is that liquid waste product and it's predominantly made up of water and then 5% of other stuff, which uh, we will definitely talk about down the road. So here is an image just to give you an idea of where the kidneys are located. Now, the left side is the uh, drawing and the right side is the actual, um, uh, it's not anatomy from a human, this is actually uh, cat anatomy, <laughs> but it looks, uh, definitely looks the same. So you can see the kidneys are situated on either the right and left side. And the right side, the kidney is shifted down a little bit. And the reason for that is because the liver takes up so much space on the right side of our bodies. So you can see, uh, let me get my pin out for you that uh, I'm just going to trace the kidney here and you can see this tube that leaves the kidney and goes down into the bladder and that uh, is similar on the other side as well um, and so then you can see the the kidneys in situ uh, on the other image So here we're looking at the stripped down image of the male urinary system. And uh, so you can see here where I'm highlighting in yellow, that is the renal pelvis. It's kind of this widening uh, at the uh, 
the proximal end of the ureter and then that long snaky tube that uh, is going down to the bladder is the ureter and then the male anatomy is a little bit different because it has this gland that lives at the bottom of the bladder at the base of the bladder and that is called the prostate gland and so the male urethra actually passes through the prostate that's called the prosthetic urethra and then into the penis and then again it has the urethromiatus right at the end where the urine exits so some functions of the urinary system First and foremost, like I mentioned, the urinary system removes waste materials from the body in the form of a liquid waste product called urine. Uh, it also helps to regulate fluid volume. As I mentioned previously, 95% of urine is made up of water. It also helps to maintain that electrolyte balance and lastly, assists in blood pressure regulation as well. Now, some gender differences. The female urethra is relatively short. It's about one and a half inches long and it lies anterior to or in front of the vaginal canal. Now the male urethra is approximately eight inches long. Remember, it extends down through the prostate gland and then into the penis. And this structural difference results in women uh, contracting bladder infections more frequently than men. And this has to do with the length of the urethra specifically. The female urethra is a lot shorter than the male urethra. So bacteria that um, can um, colonize uh, at the urethral meatus of the female do not have a very far distance to migrate to the bladder. So this increases the risk of urinary tract infection or bladder infection. All right, so now we're getting to our word parts. And uh, uh, the first one I want to talk about is cysto, which refers to bladder or a sac. Doesn't specifically refer to the urinary bladder. Um, cholecystectomy is removal of the gall bladder. All right, cystectomy is removal of the urinary bladder. Another combining form that we need to be familiar with is hema or hemato, and both of those refer to blood. Hydro refers to water, whereas litho refers to stone or calculus, uh, and then the plural of calculus is calculi. Mieto is short for meatus or opening, which sounds a lot like the regular word, so that's helpful. Nephro or reno is the word part we use to refer to kidney. And lastly on this slide, nocti, which refers to night. Think of the word nocturnal. Additional word parts, oligo. Oligo refers to a little bit, right? A scanty amount. Oligouria means we're only going a little bit little bit of urine, okay? Uh, pyelo refers to that renal pelvis that we talked about, pyelonephritis, inflammation of the renal pelvis and the kidney. Pyo is the word part that refers to pus, and then uro is the word part that refers to urination, urine, or urinary tract. Uretero, is the word part that refers to ureter, which is helpful because that does sound very similar. And also, urethro sounds very similar to urethra. Couple more uh, word parts here as far as suffixes, right? We have the suffix emia, which refers to a blood condition, whereas iasis 
is just a, a suffix that means condition. Now, plasty refers to the surgical repair of something, like abdomino plasty or rhino plasty. And lastly, here on this slide, tripsy. Tripsy refers to the surgical crushing. So if we take the word litho and we put it with the, the suffix tripsy, we get lithotripsy, which is the surgical crushing of stones. So if we have an individual that has a lot of kidney stones, sometimes they, um, they stay in the kidney, but other times they get flushed down into the ureter and they can get lodged there. And that's when we might need to do a lithotripsy. All right, so here we've built some words for you, um, some diagnostic suffixes. We've already seen scope and scopy, or scopy, okay, like cystoscope. That is the instrument that we use to view the bladder, whereas cystoscopy is that process of viewing the bladder with a scope. Similar to that, we have cystogram and cystography or cystography. Okay, cystography, um, it, let's say that we have a patient that has cystitis, right, which is inflammation of the bladder. So a cystography may identify the inflammation when we take some radiographic images of the bladder. Now a cystogram can show whether there are stones present in the bladder, okay? All right, some additional surgical suffixes that we have uh, come to know uh, already. The first one, tomi. Remember, cut into me. That is an incision into something or cutting into something. Doesn't, that, doesn't mean we're taking something out, right? If we're taking something out, that is an excision of something and that is an ectomy. So if we have a meatotomy, that means we're cutting into the meatus or the opening of something. Whereas if we have a nephrectomy, that means we are taking out or removing one of the kidneys, all right? Nephrotomy, again, we're cutting into the kidney. Now, in the old days, that's what they did to get the stones out, okay? Or maybe to remove a tumor. Uh, plasty, remember, is the surgical repair of something. So nephroplasty would be the surgical repair of the kidney. Now, suturing of something, uh, that word part, that suffix is raffi, all right? So a nephro raffi would be the suturing repair or repairing something by putting some sutures in there. Um, and here we're supposed to be talking about the kidney. Nephrostomy, remember ostomy means creating a new opening. Okay, an artificial opening. And nephrostomy would mean creating an artificial opening in the kidney. Sometimes we do this if for some reason the urine can't exit the kidney um, effectively. Uh, there's a blockage downstream somewhere. And so we may need to put a tube directly into the kidney, into the renal pelvis to drain out the urine that way, all right? we could do a nephrostomy to do that. Uh, and then the last one here, nephropexy. Pexy is the surgical fixation or suspension of something. So the surgical fixation of the kidney would be nephropexy. Remember, plasty is surgical repair. Raffi is suture repair. And pexy is surgical fixation, okay? Um, continuing on with some other word parts, um, some examples we've looked at hemato and hemo, and that 
means blood, so we could build words like hematology, right, which is the study of blood, or hematuria, which is uh, uh, urine that has blood in it. And then lastly, hemo hemorrhage, right, from hemorrhagia, which means um, that we have bleeding, all right? All right, let's look at some other word parts that are uh, pre prefix prefixes. <laughs> um, here we have uh, anurea, right, which would mean without urine, anurea, okay. Dysurea, remember dis is difficult or painful, so we have uh, a condition where there is or a painful urination or difficult urination or abnormal urination. Hematuria, hematuria, remember IA is the diseased state or condition of, and then hemat means blood, so a condition of blood, and then UR means urine. Okay, a condition of blood in the urine. Now, nocturia, remember um, IA, again, is the disease state or condition of, and then we have nocti, or nocti, which means night. So, a condition of night urination, all right? Or, a lot of times we refer to this as bedwetting. Okay, oligouria refers to a scanty amount of urine, right? There's not a lot of urine that is being uh, produced. And then pyuria would refer to a uh, pus in the urine, all right? So again, anuria is a condition of absence of urine, whereas cystitis is the inflammation of the bladder. A cystogram, remember a gram is a radiographic image of something, and here we're referring to the bladder. A graphy uh, is the same thing, a gram or a graphy. Cystolithiasis is a condition of stones in the bladder, remember. Um, the A-S-I-S -S is a condition of, and litho means stone, and cysto means bladder. Cystolithotomy, remember uh, OTMY means an incision into, and in this case, we're incising the bladder to remove a stone. The cystoscope is going to be the instrument that we would use to visualize the bladder, whereas a cystoscopy is that process, it's that action word of examining the bladder. That's the surgical procedure. We would schedule the patient for a cystoscopy and we would use a cystoscope to take a peek inside the bladder, right? And then lastly, cystostomy. Remember, ostomy is creating an artificial opening and cysto means bladder. So we're creating an artificial opening into the bladder. All right. Cystourethrography, again, remember, graphy is a radiographic image. So here, cysto is the bladder and urethro is the urethra. So we're taking some images of the bladder and the urethra. Remember, dis means difficult or abnormal or painful. And this is, um, uh, dysuria is referring to difficult or painful urination. Hematuria. That is our condition of blood in the urine, and I mentioned lithotripsy before. Lithotripsy is the surgical crushing of a stone. Now, if we have a situation where there are stones in the kidney, we call that nephrolithiasis. As I mentioned before, nocturia is a condition of night urination, whereas Oliguria is a condition of scanty urine, or just a little bit of urine. Uh, pyelolithotomy. 
Remember, otomy, cut into me. So we're making an incision, otomy, into the renal pelvis, pyelo, to remove a stone, litho. Okay, and then lastly on this slide, we have condition of pus in the urine, which is pyuria. You see how we can use these different word parts to Lego land our medical terminology. Let's look at a few more. Remember, emia means blood and ur, uro means urine. So here we have urine in the blood. Now, if we have a situation where there's inflammation of the urethra and the bladder, we would refer to that as urethro Plasty. Lastly on this slide, if we need an instrument to look into the urethra, that instrument would be called a urethroscope. Okay, few more words here, more medical terms. What does the word part hydro mean? Remember, that means water. So hydronephrosis is a, an abnormal condition of water in the kidney. It's holding on to too much water, right? Meatal, remember meat is pertaining to the meatus, uh, or means meatus, and al means pertaining to. Uh, if we are performing a meatomy, that means that we are making an incision into the meatus. Now, what about a nephrectomy? If the patient is scheduled for a nephrectomy, then that means we are going to be taking out their kidney. We're gonna be removing it, right? If the kidney is inflamed, then we refer to that as nephritis. Now, the specialist that treats individuals with disorders or diseases of the kidney is referred to as a nephrologist and the study of the kidney is nephrology. Now, as I mentioned before, let's say the patient has hydronephrosis and uh, there's too much water that is accumulating in the kidney. So in that case, we need to create a new opening into the kidney to drain some of that water out and that is going to be a nephrostomy. And then lastly, let's say the patient has um, lithiasis, right? Nephrolithiasis. They have some stones in the kidney, and maybe we need to get those out. And to do that, um, maybe we need to make an incision in the kidney so that we can get in there to those stones. We would refer to that as a nephrotomy. All right, moving on, a few more uh, here. Pyelonephritis, remember pyelo refers to the renal pelvis. Again, as I mentioned, there are these little functional units in the kidney and they're referred to as the nephrons. And these nephrons are these amazing little filter units in our kidneys. Now they're going to filter out the urine and that urine is going to collect in the renal pelvis. If there is an inflammation of that renal pelvis and the kidney, we refer to that as pyelonephritis. Now another word to just say pertaining to the kidney is renal. Perhaps the patient is diagnosed with renal failure, right? Failure. Uh, pertaining to the kidneys. They're no longer functioning effectively. Now, if we needed to do something to the ureter, the word part for that is ureter. Okay, so if we are going to remove the ureter, that would be a ureterectomy. If there is a stone that is stuck in the ureter, then we refer to that as a ure ureterolithiasis, the condition of a stone in the ureter. 
Now, what if we need to make an incision into the ureter to remove those stones? Now, this is an old school approach that we don't do very much anymore. But way back in the day, in the days of Socrates, they would have these public displays of uh, ureterolithotomies where they would basically bring the patient into the town square and proceed to cut them open to get something out. Maybe they cut into their skull, maybe they cut into their kidney, whatever. It sounds like an awesome time. Um, that procedure to remove stones through an incision in the ureter is referred to as a ureterolithotomy. Now, after we take those stones out, we can't just leave the ureter open, we gotta sew it back up, right? Otherwise, the urine is gonna leak all over the place and that wouldn't be good. So we have to do a ureteroplasty, which means a surgical repair of that ureter. And then lastly here, if we have inflammation of the entire ball of wax, which is the ureter, the renal pelvis, and the kidney, we are going to call that ureteropyelonephritis, inflammation of the ureter, the renal pelvis, and the kidney. Okay, so a urogram, remember, that's a radiographic image of the urinary tract. Uro, remember, means urinary tract. So if we have a urologist, that is a person, a specialist, that studies and treats the diseases of the urinary tract. Now, urology is that study of the, of the uh, urinary tract. And then lastly, um, a creation of an artificial opening into the urinary tract is referred to as a urostomy. Remember, ostomy means creating an artificial opening into something. Okay, some medical terms that uh, are not built from word parts. So we just covered a whole bunch of terms that are built from word parts and I'm sure you will agree that that was super fun, super fun. Now let's talk about some that are not built from word parts. And some of these also have abbreviations, which we will look at on the upcoming slides here. But um, we're gonna start out the discussion with chronic kidney disease. Uh, which is abbreviated CKD. Now this is a progressive irreversible loss of kidney function. So kidneys are progressively continuing to function. Uh, um, they're losing their ability to function, I guess I should say. Uh, the next one I wanna talk about is dialysis. Now dialysis is a procedure for removing toxic waste artificially from the blood because the kidneys cannot do it themselves, all right? So blood is removed from the patient, uh, not all of it at the same time, and uh, it is uh, put through an artificial filter and then it is uh, reintroduced back into the patient's body. Now, another interesting uh, thing that we can do in surgery is called an extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. And that is abbreviated as SWAL or ESWL. And this is a non invasive procedure to break up those stones that are in the kidneys. Now, that doesn't mean that it is not painful. We have to bring these individuals into the operating room and we have to put them under general anesthesia. And we use shock waves. There's a special machine that goes, uh, uses uh, ultrasonic waves, it goes right up against the the side of the patient where the kidney lives and it will deliver those shock waves to break up those stones so hopefully they will be small enough to be passed out of the body through the urine. Incontinence. Incontinence is the inability of an individual to control their bladder or their bowels and uh, a lot of uh, commercials on TV right about stress incontinence uh, if you're laughing, if you're sneezing, uh, if you're straining at all, and that causes a scanty amount of urine to escape through the urethromeatus, we refer to that as incontinence. 
renal calculi, remember we said a calculus is a stone and the plural of calculus is calculi. So renal calculi refers to stones that are uh, in the kidney. Renal failure, again, loss of kidney function. This is a progressive disease that results in the inability of the kidney to filter all of that stuff, those wastes from the blood that is passing through the kidneys. And um, if the kidneys can't remove the waste, then that is when a kidney transplant or dialysis would be needed to keep the patient alive. Uh, and again, renal transplant, that is putting in a new kidney, all right? Now, sometimes uh, preoperatively, patients have to have some testing, and one of those tests could potentially be a urinalysis, and it, this doesn't, it's not just related to surgical procedures, right? Um, if an individual goes in and they're having discomfort when they urinate, they may do a urinalysis. That could tell if there is a urinary tract infection. But a urinalysis is a laboratory test and uh, you know, they look at the urine. Uh, way back when, uh, the old guys used to test urine by smelling it, looking at it, and tasting it. How would you like that job? Uh, a urinary catheterization is a procedure which involves placing a tube up through the urethra and into the bladder. And then there's our UTI, or urinary tract infection, which is an infection of one or more organs of the urinary tract. And a lot of times, if it's let go, it will track uh, up the ureters and into the kidneys. Uh, and that is not a good thing. Uh, and then lastly, the term void. That word is used to describe the passing of urine. All right, so let's look at some abbreviations. Uh, you may see catheterization or catheter abbreviated as cath, and we do use that term quite frequently. CKD is the abbreviation for chronic kidney disease, and then there's that SWA abbreviation that stands for extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy. HD is the shortening for hemodialysis, which is the same as dialysis. Those are synonymous, dialysis and, and hemodialysis. Um, and then we have OAB, which is overactive bladder. This is the feeling of having to urinate, uh, even when there's only a little bitty amount of urine in the bladder. A PCT is a patient care technician, and PKD is something uh, that uh, disease called polycystic kidney disease. And this is a situation where a bunch of these like urine filled cysts form on the kidney. It's really crazy looking. Um, UA is the abbreviation for urinalysis. UTI, we talked about that, that's urinary tract infection. And just a little tidbit here, UTI is the most common surgical site infection. Well, nosocomial infection, uh, not surgical site infection, but it's the most common infection that people get in the hospital. Um, and then lastly, VCUG, which is avoiding cystourethrogram. And this involves having the patient drink a whole bunch of water so that their bladder is really full. And then they usually use um, an ultrasound and they get a picture of the bladder when it's full. And then they have them void and they take some images um, throughout that process. Uh, to get an idea of how the bladder is functioning. Some clinical categories. Again, in previous lectures, we've looked at discerning what is a sign symptom, what is a disease disorder. So here, dysuria, incontinence, and pyuria are all categorized as sign symptoms. Um, again, uh, cholelithiasis and uremia are characterized as diseases and or disorders. 
And then lastly, coming into the home stretch, talking about the urinary system, um, looking at diagnostic test versus surgical procedure. So uh, processes such as cystoscopy, urinalysis, urogram, those are all diagnostic tests. Those help us to gain a better understanding of what's going on with our patient. And then we can proceed, uh, if need be, to a surgical procedure, such as if the patient has stones, right, uh, in their bladder, let's say, um, then a cystolithotomy may be the thing that we need to do, or um, a urethroplasty is also a surgical procedure and uh, sometimes we do these on little ones there's a a, a couple congenital conditions uh, uh epispadius and hypospadius where the opening to the urethral meatus is up on the top of the glands of the penis or underneath on the glands of the penis instead of coming right off the tip of the glands and in that case sometimes we we do urethroplasty so that we can relocate the opening of the urethral meatus into the proper position Okay, so now we are going to transition away from the urinary system and talk about the female and male reproductive systems. So let's talk about some structures of the female reproductive system. And uh, some of these structures include the breasts, which are the organs that produce milk or the glands rather, uh, the cervix, which is an extension of the uterus, and it is the narrower, longer portion that extends into the vaginal canal. Now there is a lining that is inside the uterus, and that is referred to as the endometrium. There is also a muscular layer to the uterus, and that is called the myometrium. Now the ovaries are almond-shaped organs that are situated on either side of the pelvic cavity and their job is to store the reproductive cells called the ova, which is plural, or ovum, and these eggs are expelled during something called ovulation. And uh, the ovaries also produce some hormones, uh, and, and uh, those are estrogen and progesterone, uh, and there are a few others as well. Um, like I mentioned, the ovum is the female reproductive cell, and the uterine tubes, we also have other names for them, like the fallopian tubes. And uh, if you've ever heard of or have had your tubes tied, uh, these are the tubes that they're talking about. And these tubes are pathways that connect the uterus and the ovary. So essentially during fertilization or uh, ovulation, uh, first and foremost, the ovum is produced from the ovary and it gets swept up by these little projections that are on the end of the uterine tubes called the fimbriae. And the fimbriae are these little sweepers and they sweep the egg up into the tube. And the egg travels along the tube. It is a very arduous journey, both for the egg and the sperm. Um, and uh, when the two meet, that is referred to as fertilization, which a lot of times does occur in the fallopian tube. Now, the uterus is a uh, kind of fist-sized, pear-shaped, very muscular organ that grows up to 500 times its size during uh, um, uh, the growth and development of the fetus to accommodate the developing fetus. Um, it's uh, some of its functions are menstruation, of course, and then to 
uh, serve as a place for development of the fetus during pregnancy. And then it goes to work. Um, we said that it has a very thick muscular layer and that muscular layer is responsible for contractions that help to push the baby along the birth canal. And uh, then lastly, the uh, structure uh, that is uh, important to talk about in the female reproductive system is the vagina. And this is a slightly S-shaped tube and it connects the uterus. It is um, uh, between the, the uterus and the outside body. So it connects the two. And like I said, the cervix of the uterus is like this neck of the uterus that extends down into the vaginal canal. Now, <clears throat> I have some imaging images coming up, so stay tuned for that. But really quickly, let me just give you the overview of the male reproductive system. Now, there's a bunch of different parts to the, female, the, to the male reproductive system, female as well, um, but uh, here we're specifically focusing on the male reproductive system. And uh, the first structure I want to talk about is the epididymis. Now the epididymis lives uh, on top of uh, each of the testicles or testes. And uh, this is where the sperm uh, is born. All right, and the epididymis is this long coiled tube and the sperm kind of travel through this very long winding road as they're maturing and uh, eventually uh, upon ejaculation enter into the vas deferens and travel uh, through that pathway out to the open world. Now the penis is the male organ of urination and is also the sex organ that is used during copulation and it serves to uh, provide delivery of sperm into the vagina so that conception can occur. The prostate gland, we saw that once before. Remember, it lives at the base of the bladder and part of the urethra for the male travels through the prostate, that's called the prostatic urethra, and then into the penis and terminates at the urethral meatus. Now the prostate gland is responsible for secreting some fluid that contributes to the semen and it assists with the movement of sperm and with ejaculation. Now the scrotum is the tissue or sac that houses the testicles and the epididymis. It's that outside part that we can see that covers the testicles. Now the vas deferens uh, extend from the scrotum into the abdominal cavity through something called the inguinal ring and they're suspended on both sides of and just behind the penis. All right, but the scrotum is responsible for regulating the temperature of the testicles. The semen, uh, the sperm, excuse me, do not like a temperature that's too hot or a temperature that's too cold. So the scrotum is responsible for either uh, relaxing and uh, allowing the testicles to move a little bit away from the body so that uh, they're not so hot or uh, contracting and raising the testicles closer to the core of the body um, for additional warmth. Now the semen is an amalgamation of different fluids and other secretions plus the sperm and uh, you know it's this substance that is really high in sugar and nutrients and it helps to protect the sperm and nourish them and help them move along the pathway during ejaculation. Now the seminal vesicles are glands that are located at the base of the urinary bladder and they open into the vas deferens. And they also secrete a fluid that contributes to the motility and the nourishment of the sperm. The sperm is the male reproductive sex cell. Remember we said the ovum is the female reproductive sex cell. The sperm is the male reproductive sex cell. And uh, the testicle uh, 
goes by several names, including the testis, which is singular for the testicle, and then testes or testicles, uh, which is plural. And so they're the primary sex organs. Again, they are responsible for the, the birth um, and development of the sperm, right? And then they also produce a hormone uh, for the male, and that is called testosterone. Now the urethra serves a couple purposes in the male. Not only does it transport urine to the outside of the body, but it also transports the sperm and the semen to the outside of the body as well. And those vas deferens, if you've ever heard or if you have ever had a vasectomy, these are the tubes that get transected during a vasectomy. They are responsible for carrying the sperm from the epididymis to the urethra where it exits uh, the body. All right, so let's trace the uh, pathway of the sperm. So we're just going to uh, look at the right side here, but it, just know that it's the same on the left side as well until the, they uh, combine. Um, so this structure right here is the testicle. That's a very bad circle, but um, this is the testicle here or the testis, and this is where the sperm um, are uh, born and they enter into the epididymis, which is this structure right here that lives on the top of the testicles. And like I said, this is this very coiled, um, long pathway. And the sperm uh, develop here, right? And as they're slowly moving through this long corridor uh, of the epididymis. And uh, at the point in which ejaculation occurs, the sperm are going to be thrust from the epididymis up through the vas deferens, right? They're going to pass through uh, or by the seminal vesicles, which is right here. There's one on either side. And remember, these seminal vesicles are going to contribute to the the fluid that carries the sperm, which we call semen. There's also another gland uh, that the um, sperm are going to pass through, and that is the prostate. Okay, here's the prostate. Um, the prostate, again, secretes some milky fluid that helps to contribute to the semen. And so that is going to travel now down into the urethra. And on either side of the urethra are these little baby glands. And these are called the bulbo urethral glands or the cowper's glands. And they are going to contribute to that seminal fluid as well. And um, that's going to help to bathe and nourish and protect the, the sperm. All right, so now they uh, finish their journey. They leave the um, urethra and uh, let's say uh, they go into the vagina. Okay, and when they do, the vagina is a very uninhabitable environment. Um, the vagina has approximately the same acidity as tomatoes, and that is very uh, detrimental to the sperm. And so on contact, a lot of the sperm are killed, um, and then uh, it's still a lot, but a, uh, a lot smaller number of sperm actually um, enter the cervix and into the uterus in search of the egg. Okay, so that is uh, the male reproductive system in a nutshell. So let's look at the female reproductive system. Here, uh, let's start down here at the bottom, we see the vagina and it's this very muscular tube and uh, it goes to the outside world. And here you can see the cervix extending 
into the vaginal canal and uh, it is an extension of the uterus okay so this this um, whole thing right this whole big thing right here is the uterus and um, you can see how it has this very thick muscular wall and uh, this top part right here is called the fundus the big top part and um, these little pathways extending off on either side are our fallopian tubes. And our fallopian tubes, um, they sweep up the egg. Okay, so right over here is the ovary. And just uh, recognize that there is one on either side. There are two ovaries, but we're just looking at the left side of the anatomy. And uh, the ovaries produce those ovum. And when the little egg comes out, okay, boop, the little egg comes out, it gets swept up by these little fimbria, these little sweepers, all right? And the egg travels through the tube um, and uh, the sperm are swimming up to try to find the egg. And eventually, uh, if fertilization does occur, the egg is going to come down and it's going to implant itself in the side of the uterine wall and uh, the implantation is going to occur. And in nine months, hopefully we have a birthday party. All right, so functions of the reproductive system. I think it's clear. They produce sex cells. Okay, the female reproductive system produces the egg and the male reproductive system produces the sperm. All right, they secrete hormones. Okay, uh, we said the male testes secrete testosterone and the female ovaries secrete um, estrogen and progesterone along with some other fun things. And they provide for conception and pregnancy. So let's look at some different terms. Uh, the, the first of those being cervico, which refers to the cervix, and then colpo or vagino, which refers to the vagina. Now, endometrio sounds like endometrium. That uh, refers to that inner layer, innermost layer of the uterus. And then gynaco refers to woman. So uh, like the term gynecology, right? It's the study of women. Hystero refers to uterus and mammo or masto is the word part that we use to refer to the female breast or any breast uh, for that matter. Could be male. Uh, meno is the term for menstruation or menstrual and then oophoro is the word part for ovary like oophorectomy would be the, the excision of an ovary. Salpingo is uh, the term that we use to refer to fallopian tube. And then lastly, sono, sound, like sonogram, right? Same uh, uh, synonymous with ultrasound. Um, word parts that are associated with the male reproductive system are orchio, which refers to the testes, prostato, which refers to the prostate, scroto to refer to the scrotum and then the term for vessel or duct is vaso or vaso. Some suffixes that we need to talk about. Uh, seal. Seal refers to a hernia or a protrusion uh, and then we've seen pexy and raffi before. Pexy, remember, is the surgical fixation or suspension of something, and raffi is the suturing or repairing of something. And then lastly, rexis, which I don't think we have come across before, uh, refers to a rupture. <clears throat> so let's look at some different terms. The first one here is amenorrhea. And amenorrhea means without menstrual flow. Remember that A on the front, the prefix, refers to without, all right? Cervical is pertaining to the cervix, whereas cervixectomy is the excision of the cervix. 
if the cervix is inflamed, we call that cervicitis. Whereas if we're using an instrument to view the vagina, we refer to that as a colposcope. Now the process of that visual examination of the vagina is called a colposcopy. Now sometimes, uh, and a lot of times, uh, cystocele is associated with multiple pregnancies. Um, but what happens is the, the connective tissue that holds up the uterus and the bladder, they start to deteriorate and lose their elasticity. And this can result in a protrusion of the bladder through the anterior vaginal wall. It can also happen through the posterior vaginal wall. So if it's anterior, we refer to that as cystocele, and if it's posterior, we refer to that as rectocele. And typically they do occur simultaneously, and uh, we can repair these surgically. Uh, dysmenorrhea is painful, menstrual flow, and then lastly here, endometrial is pertaining to the endometrium. If we have a situation or a condition of the endometrium, we call this endometriosis. And uh, for some weird reason, the little cells that make up the tissue of the endometrium, they migrate to the outside of the uh, uterus and into the abdominal cavity, and they'll implant themselves on various organs in the abdominal cavity, typically the uterus and the ovaries, and this can be very painful. Um, endometritis refers to the inflammation of the endometrium. And then here we have that uh, the physician who studies and treats diseases of women, that is a gynecologist. And then the study of women or that branch of medicine, we refer to that as gynecology. Now, if we are removing the uterus, we refer to that as a hysterectomy. That does not include the removal of the tubes and the ovaries. We'll get to that, okay? But hysterectomy refers only to the removal of the uterus, not the uh, other organs uh, that are there. Hysteropexy refers to the surgical fixation of the uterus. Like I said, sometimes the, there's four sets of ligaments that suspend the uterus and the pelvic cavity, and over time, those start to stretch out. And um, so that can cause a, pro a prolapse um, or a sagging of the uterus. And then lastly, hysteropathy, which is a suturing of the uterus. Um, this might be a, a situation where they did a C-section and they cut into the uterus and they got the baby out and now they need to suture it back up. That would be a hysteropathy. Now, if we want to get some images of the uterus and the uterine tubes, remember that word part that means uterine tubes is salpingo. Okay, we know that hystero means uterus and gram means radiographic images. Um, if we are going to take out, uh, excise, if you will, the uterus, the tubes, and the ovaries, that is a really big long word. Uh, that is hysterosalpingo oophorectomy. Or a lot of times we say total abdominal hysterectomy, which is abbreviated as TAH, with bilateral salpingo oophorectomy, which is BSO. So sometimes we might see this scheduled as TAH BSO. That means we're taking out the uterus, both tubes, and both ovaries. A mammogram and a mammo mammography. Those are both radiographic images of the breast for diagnostic purposes. Now, mammoplasty is a surgical repair of the breast, and a lot of times we do this, it's called a breast lift, all right? That's its street name. And uh, any uh, and all of us know that gravity takes a toll on the body, and um, plastic surgeons take advantage of that because when boobs start to droop, um, they get to do mammoplasties, um, and so that's a breast lift. Now, mastectomy is the excision of the breast, whereas a mastopexy is a surgical fixation of the breast. Um, 
and mammoplasty and, ma and mastopexy a lot of times go together where we're doing like a breast lift with implants. Okay, and then lastly, mastitis, which is inflammation of the breast. And, and sometimes this, this occurs uh, most frequently, I think, in females that um, are breastfeeding or, um, or that sort of thing. Now, menorrhagia. Remember we said raja is the rapid flow of blood, and here menorrhagia is that rapid flow of blood at menstruation. Um, uh, just referring to the flow at menstruation is menorrhea, and there is that oophorectomy. Remember, oophor means ovary, so oophorectomy would be removing the ovary. Oophoritis would be inflammation of that ovary, and oophoropexy would be surgical fixation of the ovary. Now again, remember the word part salpango means uterine tube or fallopian tube. And so if we have an inflammation of the fallopian tube, we have salpingitis. Um, the process of recording sound, like if we want to see the baby in the uterus, uh, that would be an ultrasonography or sonography. Uh, the term vaginal means pertaining to the vagina, and the term vaginitis is inflammation of the vagina. Now, uh, let's talk about some medical terms for the male reproductive system. Remember, orky means testis or testicle. All right, so removal of the testicle would be an orchiectomy. The inflammation of that testicle would be an would be orchitis, and the surgical fixation of the testy would be an orchiopexy. Now, a lot of times we perform orchiopexies when we have something called a testicular torsion, and that means the testicle gets twisted in the scrotum. And so an orchiopexy is something that we can do to uh, fix that. Now, a prostatectomy is the removal of a prostate, uh, of the prostate glands, but if we're just simply referring to uh, something pertaining to the prostate, we would use the term prostatic. Like the prostatic urethra is the part of the urethra that passes through the prostate. Now, inflammation of the prostate is referred to as prostatitis. Right, and inflammation of the prostate and the bladder would be referred to as prostatocystitis. And then if we're going to refer to the scrotum, we would use the term scrotal. A few more terms here, scrotoplasty. Remember, plasty is the surgical repair of something. So scrotoplasty is the surgical repair of the scrotum. A vasectomy is the excision of the duct, okay? Um, typically, this is done for sterilization of the male. And then lastly, vasovasostomy is the reversal of the vasectomy, all right? Individual had a vasectomy, didn't think they wanted any more kids, changed their mind, now they do. Uh, we will do a vasovasostomy. Uh, this is a can be a very lengthy procedure. It is done with the microscope and some sutures that look like a hair. All right, it can be very intense. Uh, a, a situation that can complicate the procedure is the sperm are housed in a closed system. So by cutting the vas deferens when they do a vasectomy, typically some of the sperm spill out uh, and or semen into the surrounding tissues and that can cause inflammation. So sometimes if that's the case and they have to trim away too much of the vas deferens, uh, they're not going to be able to suture them together because they will not have enough length uh, for them to come back together. Okay, uh, believe it or not, we are moving into the home stretch. Uh, let's talk about some medical terms that are not built from word parts for the female reproductive system, and then we will look at similar medical terms for the male reproductive system.
All right, so uh, to start out, we have dilation and curettage, and this is uh, sometimes referred to as a DNC. And uh, a DNC is a surgical procedure where we dilate the cervix just a little bit and we get some tissue samples from the cervix and the uterus for testing, typically a diagnostic test, all right? Obstetrics is the branch of medicine that uh, deals with the management of pregnancy, labor, and then the little one for about six months after birth. Now, the PAP or papaniculo test, uh, uh, as it's called, is a uh, a diagnostic test that is typically performed in the office. And again, it's a, uh, a study of the cells. They get tissue samples and um, they look at those cells to determine if there's anything abnormal or precancerous there. Uh, sometimes you might hear it referred to as a pap smear. Now, uh, pelvic inflammatory disease, sometimes uh, abbreviated as PID, is the inflammation of some or all of the female reproductive organs, and this can be caused by a variety of pathogens, and pathogens are those microorganisms that cause diseases in humans. Um, or, you know, cause diseases, but here we're specifically talking about humans. So, um, you know, this is uh, can be a big concern because the reproductive system for the female opens up to the outside world. So if a microorganism is introduced into the vagina, it can migrate into the cervix, up into the uterus, along the fallopian tubes, and out into the abdominal pelvic cavity. All right, and that is what we refer to as pelvic inflammatory disease. Or sometimes uh, the surgeons, they will um, have a little funny abbreviate or, you know, a, a funny name for this. They say there's pus in dare, pus in dare, P-I-D, right? Because usually there's some sort of fluid in the abdomen. Um, uterine fibroids. So remember how I talked about the uterus has this very thick myometrium, which is the, the muscular layer of the uterus. Sometimes tumors form in that muscular layer. And uh, when that happens, we refer to it as a myoma or a uterine fibroid or just a fibroid. And uh, sometimes we do myomectomies, but it has a tendency to bleed a lot. And so, you know, that's really a conversation between the patient and the surgeon, like depending on age and, you know, have they had kids or do they want to have babies or those kinds of things. Um, and then lastly here on this slide is a ureterovaginal prolapse. And again, this is that displacement of the, the uterus into the vagina. All right, continuing on, as I promised, with some terms not built from word parts that are associated with the male reproductive system. And the first one I want to talk about is benign prostatic hyperplasia or hypertrophy. Sometimes you might uh, hear it called, and that's abbreviated as B. PH. And basically, this is the enlargement of the prostate. It is not cancerous. That's why they call it benign, but it is an enlargement of the prostate. Now, because we know that part of the urethra does pass through the prostate, the enlargement of the prostate can cause pressure against that pathway or closure of that pathway altogether, and then it makes it really difficult for the male to evacuate or void urine from the bladder um, because that pathway is disrupted. Um, circumcision. Circumcision is the removal of all or part of the foreskin of the penis, and we do these in surgery. Um, sometimes there's situations in older males where they have something called phimosis or paraphimosis where the foreskin can either not be retracted or it can't be replaced, and so we have to do a circumcision because of that. 
Um, a digital rectal examination, not digital like technology, but digital like your finger, okay? A finger, <laughs> maybe not your finger. Um, but this refers to a physical examination in which the healthcare provider is going to insert a finger into the rectum to feel the prostate, all right? This is a way that they can feel if the prostate is enlarged, um, and so for diagnostic purposes. Um, erectile dysfunction is the inability of the male to attain or maintain an erection that's sufficient to perform sexual intercourse. And sometimes this is also referred to as impotence. Now, there is a specific antigen that cancerous uh, cells of the prostate can produce, okay? Um, so an antigen is a chemical that is secreted by the uh, membrane of the cell. And so there's different antigens for every single cell and microorganism, and um, it's, it, it's unique to that cell type. And so there is a blood test that we can uh, do called the prostate specific antigen assay, and that's abbreviated as PSA. And that measures the level of prostate specific antigen, which is a protein produced by the prostate gland. And if this is high, that could indicate uh, cancer, okay, where there's abnormal cells that are proliferating or continuing to grow. Um, semen analysis, again, a diagnostic laboratory test that's used to um, look at the sperm uh, underneath a microscope. So they can look at the size, the structure, the motility of the sperm. All right, and they can use this to evaluate infertility um, and determine if the vasectomy was effective as well. A sexually transmitted infection. Well, they used to refer to these as sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, but they have since changed that uh, to STI. So sexually transmitted infections are those infections that are specifically transmitted through sexual contact. And then lastly here, transurethral resection of the prostate, or TERP, it's abbreviated as. And the TERP is a procedure that we perform on males that have benign prostatic hypertrophy or hyperplasia. So if a male has BPH and they can no longer urinate or it's very difficult to urinate, then we can um, put a scope into the urethra and uh, clear out a better pathway by removing some of that tissue. Um, sexually transmitted diseases, um, they affect both males and females. And uh, Sometimes these sexually transmitted diseases can damage uh, the reproductive organs and have potential, uh, potentially serious or deadly health consequences if left untreated. And so, you know, this is uh, a lot of times directly related to the riskiness of the behavior of the individual. Um, some sexually transmitted diseases uh, that the book talks about are parasitic, which um, pubic lice and trichomoniasis are examples of parasitic sexually transmitted diseases. And just wait until microbiology. We will talk about all of these in detail. Now, bacterial sexually transmitted diseases or infections um, include chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and vaginosis, all caused by specific bacteria. Um, viral sexually transmitted infections include cytomegalovirus, herpes, hepatitis B, 
HIV, AIDS, and the human papilloma virus. Now let's look at some abbreviations. Um, and we kind of went through most of these, but uh, just to review, BPH refers to benign prostatic hyperplasia, or as I said, you might hear it as hypertrophy. The prostate is growing too large, all right? It's enlarging. CX is the abbreviation for cervix, and DNC is that procedure we talked about that is a dilation and curettage. DRE is the abbreviation for digital rectal examination, and ED is the abbreviation for erectile dysfunction. HPV is how we abbreviate human papillomavirus. Now, HSG stands for hysterosalpingo. Uh, gram. Remember, we're, we're taking some images of the uterus and the tubes, the fallopian tubes. OBGYN, this abbreviation means obstetrician slash gynecologist. PID, again, stands for pelvic inflammatory disease. PSA is that prostate-specific antigen uh, test that they can do on uh, males to look at the, the um, level of antigen in the blood. Uh, radical prostatectomy. <clears throat> Again, this is the removal of the entire prostate. And then STD uh, is the abbreviation for sexually transmitted disease. STI, sexually transmitted infection. And then here is our TAHBSO. Remember, that is removal of the entire uterus and both tubes and ovaries. A transrectal ultrasound is uh, abbreviated as TRUS, and the transurethral resection of the prostate gland is abbreviated as TURP, but we say it as TURP. All right, um, some clinical categories. Uh, here we're looking at specialty profession or surgical procedure. So our specialty is gynecology, whereas the profession is a gynecologist. The three examples in the middle are examples of surgical procedures, which include mastectomy, which is the excision of the breast, orchiectomy, which is excision of the testis or testicle, and scrotoplasty, which is the surgical repair of the scrotum. Couple more here, signs or symptoms or just related terms. So we have amenorrhea and menorrhagia are signs and symptoms. Remember, um, rhea is the flow or discharge, okay, of uh, something. And um, here we're talking about the menstrual flow. So amenorrhea is we're really not having a menstrual flow, okay? There's an absence of that. Um, and menorrhagia is just referring to menstrual flow. The middle ones are related terms, right? Cervical, uh, where it means pertaining to the cervix. Prostatic, pertaining to the prostate. And scrotal, pertaining to the scrotum. Lastly, disease slash disorder or diagnostic tests. So we have a few disease disorders here. The first one is orchiitis. It is inflammation of the testicle. Oophoritis, on the other hand, is inflammation of the ovary. And mastitis is inflammation of the breast. The two diagnostic tests are the DRE, which is the digital rectal examination to check uh, for enlarged prostate, and then the semen analysis. All right, everyone, that brings us to the end of our discussion on the um, urinary system and the male and female reproductive system. So I hope you found it helpful and I look forward to answering any questions that you have. And as always, thank you for listening.